And the decision to go with the studio, the Maggie Bassett Studios, where, where did that decision yeah. come from? Because that wasn't a writer's place. No, and this is this is what I, this is what I was starting uh, starting to say. So we so we we had a building which was unusual for people to start with a building. We got a second space, which was the extra space. The Maggie Bassett Studio was meant to be for training. We decided there was a period in the, in the 80s when people really wanted more training and they didn't have it. Uh, the, the number of schools weren't around and, and th there just was a need and people actors. felt it. Actors. 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 And it really worked well for a number of years until a point came when, I think maybe, I don't know how many years in, we realized that we were getting hobbyists and not actors. It was people who wanted to know what it was like to, to, to take a class, and, and so we, we cut it down. We, we stopped it at that point, which I thought was very wise. <clears throat> um, but in the meantime, we used it for all kinds of things. I mean, we, you, if you remember, we had a lecture series here. It was, we had Jonathan Miller, we had John Jory, we had uh, uh, Edward Albee, we had, uh, you know, it was, it was a really interesting series. We had the Critics' Night and with, all, with Gina and all those, those folks. Um, it, it, was, it was well used and we named, everybody said, oh, you got money from the Bassetts, did you? We said, no, we named it after Maggie Bassett because we really like her. <laughs> and Maggie Bassett was? Maggie Bassett was a woman who ran Theatre Ontario for a while, or worked there, maybe she ran it. She was a wonderful woman. She was my, she was my model. I thought, when I get old, this is who I want to be. I want to be Maggie Bassett, who Did smoked like, like, a, yeah, smoked like, like a chimney, yes. She, she was thin as a rail and smoked like a chimney and, you know, set her mind and all those wonderful things. I thought, yes, that's, that's, that's who I want to be when I'm however old she was. I probably thought she was older than she was, but I thought everybody was older. Um, funny, that. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Especially now. Um, but... Uh, and how it, did she become associated with Tarragon? Well, she was working in our... She was, I don't know, she was working in our box office or something. I mean, it was as simple as that. We just... She was just such a lovely woman. And I think she volunteered. Whose decision? Whose decision to call it? Probably... Person? Well, it was in... When did we do it? I guess it was Bill and or urge on me. But I, I mean, I, I do distinctly remember thinking, yeah, let's name it after Maggie. I like it because it predated corporate naming. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The Rogers Center, the this that's center, right, the, that's right, that building. And it had nothing. Nobody could say. So why did she give you a lot of money? No, <laughs> we just like her. <laughs> yeah, no, that and that was part of what I liked about this building. Anyway, there was that. Then there was there was Andy and his performing arts fair, right. which ran for twenty years here, and you know uh, there are lots lots of fairs now. There's lots of things happening like that. There are lots of schools. There are lots of people who give classes. Then there was Urjo in the Six Playwrights Unit, which became a, uh, you know, now everybody has a unit of some kind. But he was the one who first made that, up, and being Urjo, it was very, um, I won't say structured, but it, it, it wasn't, well, it was structured. He had a plan. He, he, he had a period of time, and he, he and Andy took six writers through a whole series of exercises and, and expected something from them. Uh, it wasn't just a residency. Uh, I think now there are a number of theaters who have playwrights in residence, but it's much more uh, an, an individual does what they want and gets what they want from it. I think when you were in the unit here, with, when Urja was here, you were expected to come through. Not, with a, not necessarily with a, I mean, a finished script, but you were expected to be there and to take part and to, to respect the, the process. And when Urjo approached you as general manager with his idea, your mm -hmm. thought was? Yes. I don't think I've ever said, I don't think I've ever said no. I mean, uh, you, you work with people 
they're, they're the artists. They're the ones with the vision. And do you ask the question as general manager, how do we fund this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And but what that, was the answer to that? We always found a way. I mean, we found a way, f I mean, which is sometimes why we would label some things like the Chalmers, this or the, they were, um, and we, we had, we had funds. I mean, I, I suppose in a way, I always like to say the the first prize we ever won, <coughs> excuse me, which was the Vantage Arts Award, the Vantage Cigarette Fund, uh, when we packed was uh, first started, it had a, it found a connection with Vantage Cigarettes as a way of getting money, and they gave out a prize to a company, and we got the first prize, and it was twenty thousand dollars, and this was back in the, you know, the, the dim past, so it could have been two hundred as far as I was concerned. So I said, I, I don't think we should spend this. Let's put it aside and make it a little fund, the Vantage Fund. And so we did, and it started this whole thing of when we got some money uh, un unexpectedly, we'd add it to the fund, or if we had a surplus, we'd put it in the fund, and it was called the designated fund. Um, and it, it sits there now, uh, it's probably half a million dollars. And that, is that, that's very Mallory, isn't it? It is very to Mallory, say, yes. Here's some money we weren't expecting. <laughs> Uh, let's not add to the production <laughs> budget. Let's not add yeah. ten more actors. Let's yeah. put it aside. Where did you learn this prudence? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's, it's coming from the Midwest, maybe. Uh, coming from a family that probably did this. And did your artistic director say, Mallory? No, no. They were. They, no, I. They they went along with it. And it meant we we always had a cushion. I mean, and we. It wasn't that we didn't spend it. We did with, with things that were, and then you, then you build it back up again. It's, it's what now we call the sustainability funds, you know, and all of that, and the working capital. And it's just that we didn't call it anything, but except the Vantage Fund or the Chalmers Fund or the Bill Glasgow Fund when, uh, when he left. I'm still... I, I can't quite hear the discussions between Urjo and you or Bill and you. They were, they were right with me, as I was with them when, when they wanted to do things. Describe Bill for us, if you would. Bill, Bill ha had the, one, of the, he, one of the big talents Bill had, this is, this is really facetious, but he could imitate, he could do you walking across a room and people would know imme immediately who it was. He, he was a great observer, but he could imitate walks and gest you know, physical gestures. He was uncanny the way he could do it. And of course, he was, so, he was, he was playful and he was crazy. I mean, soup on Sundays. Uh, I mean, we, we, whether we should have cream instead of milk in the at the concession stand. I mean, all these things were Bill. And uh, I mean, it was, he, he was, he was like, he was like a big grown up boy. And I know that um, he was frustrating for people sometimes, actors. Uh, I, I know, I know some actors who used to get really annoyed with him because of his directing style. Yes, he had some kind of revolts at times. Yeah, the yeah, cast at yeah, stage yeah. It gave him a hard time personally. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone would say, I think Bill was a good director. I don't think he was a great director, but he was good, and, I, and he did some wonderful plays, but, but his, his passion was always there. And the, the whole, I mean, and here's where we can get into Tremblay, I mean, the whole notion of, of doing Michel Tremblay at a time when, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't even thought of. So it was a, a magic, uh, a magic sense of honesty yeah. at the center of Bill Glasgow. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I remember yeah. when I was at university and he was doing a show and he had me in to read for something and how quiet he was and he, mm -hmm. he said, Robert, just say the words. I, mm. I just want you to say the words. He was asking me not to act. He, and I've always associated that with him, mm. this 
this magic uh, essence of honesty at the center of what he was doing. Yeah. Is that something that strikes me? Absolutely. David Ferry told me a story just the other day, and it was, um, I'm not going to get it completely right, so forgive me, David, but it was, he was at the National Theatre School and desperately wanting to audition for Bill for uh, Jamie Boy, I guess it must have been, which was early on. And uh, he ran into Bill, and somewhere Bill had seen him at the school, and David had done some piece, I think, at the school. And he saw Bill, and it was in a public place, and Bill said, uh, he, he said, I really want to be in this play, I really want to work with you. And he said, well, um, give me the speech right now that you did at the school. I think it was at the school. And so in, in the middle of you know, a public place, he did, being David Ferry. And uh, at the end of it, Bill said, you've got the part. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I love that, because it's so, it's, it's so David and it's so Bill. Uh, because if, if the, the old thing, if it, if it excited him, then he'd do it. He was a gentleman as well. Yeah. And the other thing he always said, of course, was, trust me. <laughs> and people, you know, people did to a certain extent. Sometimes they rebelled, but... Um, and where did Bill's sense of wanting Canadian writers to be heard on Canadian stages? I don't know whether that came through when he was, when he... I mean, certainly his love of theatre was always there, but maybe when he was at the university. I don't, I, I don't know where, where it came from, but it was certainly a strong... It was. Um, it was the zeitgeist, mm -hmm. but he had it in a particular form yeah. that wasn't Luscombe, that yeah. wasn't Martin Kinch, that wasn't Paul Thompson. Well, and I think, to be fair, I think uh, uh, Urjo's collaboration with that as a critic reinforced it, and uh, so reinforced it for Bill. For Bill, I mean, or you know, or confirmed it. Let's put it that way confirmed it, and it may have resulted in, in Bill thinking of Urjo when he was ready to leave, because Urjo certainly carried it. I mean, he, 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 he well, Bill did too, both of them. Both of the, people think we only ever did Canadian plays, and it's not true. Um, they both did other things as well.